Muhammad, in Namshi, you grew very quickly. How many employees are you now? Uh, we're about 150 now. And how yeah. was short uh, time, time span? About one year. Okay, so first I'm an entrepreneur, 150 employees in one year time span. How do you maintain a culture within your company? How do you empower your, your yeah. customer service yeah. as well? So I think it, it, it started from the very beginning when it was uh, looking for partners, right? So the, I mean, the first person actually I turned to was Lewis, who's here. Um, and, and how we thought about it was there's... There, one one aspect is the you know raw intelligence ability etc the passion for the for the for the space and the idea but the 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 second pillar really is the vision around the culture and what type of team we're trying to build and and what kind of an organization are we right and from the very beginning i would say that was the most important uh thing to align on with the partners from ground zero right because we i mean we didn't know that we were going to get to 150 people but if we didn't have that alignment right at the be beginning in terms of how we want to build the organization it would have been a disaster going forward then it was a very deliberate a decision in hiring, whenever we're hiring people, we're looking for certain cultural aspects, right? And we're quick then to make decisions as well. If somebody's not fitting within the culture, uh, then it's no matter how strong they are uh, in terms of their, their technical abilities or in terms of their skills, it's not the right place for them, right? And, and that was, that's been a painful process sometimes because it, it was such a fast growth where we made a lot of mistakes, definitely. Uh, but I think because we were anchored by the similar uh, value around, we wanted to be people developers in the end. We wanted to really find people who are passionate about being here because they want to take leadership within uh, the e-commerce space, within, within the startup world that's just growing now, right? People who have that passion and fire underneath them and work consciously on our side to help develop them. So that was the very beginning stage. Then we ended up needing to actually, when you have 150 people, the layers need to be put in place. You need to have people who have, you know, you, you have to have the management and sort of uh, structure for people to be able to operate within, but at the same time not lose, to Fadi's point, this ability to be anti-bureaucratic, to be, to be very much you know, take ownership and, and, and move it, push it forward, right? But know that I am, as your manager, I'm there to support you. And that's the, that's, the, that's the difference. It's like, you, you own it, but, but we're here to do anything we can to be able to make you successful. And, and that's been a, a, a development that we've had over, over, the, last, uh, over the last year. Okay. So Brian, you have slightly different experience. I'm going to have Brian answer the last question, then we can move to the floor. Uh, you have different experience because in your model, you rely a lot on freelancers, mm. uh, underground coaches, underground sports fan fans. And how do you allow, empower them and how do you retain them? I think the, the, the key point of having the culture be defined and having the values be defined, it, it, it's, we're a five-year-old startup and I think we realized this last year how important that is. And so now every hiring and firing decision we make based upon those values and just having them be clearly stated, everyone now knows them and that's essential. Um, so we're, we're rolling that out now to the, the part-time staff also who are on the ground in our sports leagues and uh, to date, we haven't done a good enough job we want to improve the quality of what we offer, and it starts with the people that you hire absolutely believing in your, in your vision and values. Uh, I'm going to take a few questions from the floor. In the meantime, maybe Joey will leave us in a bit because he has a, a car to catch, but uh, we'll keep the, the conversation going for a bit. Uh, David? <laughs> yeah, you can shout. Well, um, with Namshi, you guys moved from zero to how did you recruit all those people and how many of them are imported? Sorry, let's do this again? Okay, cool. Um, so with Namshi, you mentioned that you moved from uh, zero to 150 people in one year. And uh, the big question, you know, the big, um, you know, kind of thing that I'm interested to learn about is how did you recruit those people? Where did you find them and how many of them are imported? So they were not living over here. Yeah. And how many of them were local, you know, local talent? Yeah. Thanks. So Sure. So yeah, it's uh, it, it is a mix of actually different types of people. We have we're blessed here in, in Dubai to have such a diverse group of people. So if you kind of come to the the Nemshi uh, headquarters, you see all the different nationalities, and that's part of our strength is that is that diversity and bringing different <coughs> different viewpoints and perspectives to the table. We recruited a lot of people here from the local market. When we started, we leaned on some uh, professional help to be able to get us some key roles, right? So in in terms of spaces that we didn't have as much deep expertise in personal. Or, or networks in, for instance, our head buyers uh, for, for, for apparel, for footwear. We look to some professional help to help us get people who are well positioned within this market and have 
relevant experience in buying for the Gulf so that they, they can actually come to us and, and bring that experience. And then we brought a lot of young people Right, so we, we formed from the beginning tight relationships with the American University of Sharjah, AUD. Uh, we went to Beirut a couple of times to, uh, to AUB and, and, and brought on some people who are passionate about uh, getting right out of school and jumping into a startup and but, being but part Hamad, of this, right? Tell us, I'm not sure if I want to share it, but tell us your secret. Where did you find your sales guys? It's a sharing. It's a sharing economy. I'm not going to put you on the spot. If you don't want to share, it's fine. What do you mean by sales guys? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you had you had an interesting way of looking at people in, in a new space in a yeah. completely place where no one will look at. Yeah. So, tell us. Don't you don't have to tell us your secret, but tell us you know the thinking behind that and maybe just gen generic yeah. tips. So, so uh, one one piece is that actually. For some key roles, we looked outside of the market, right? So we have uh, quite a few Turks actually on our development team, right? So we looked at Turkey. They have some very strong uh, resources there that we, we've uh, we've brought in um, for uh, digital marketing. I mean, probably Lewis gets better to uh, to answer some of those questions. But it's it, it was one of the difficult things to find the relevant experience here, deep expertise in uh, in, in in Google and uh, in Facebook uh, analytic based uh, skill sets. So we did look uh, outside of this market as well. So we 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 leveraged a bit of a network through the uh, through through our through our incubator and our our funders to look in. We brought some people from Europe. So we didn't we didn't limit ourselves to this market. For sure, but what my point is that there is plenty of talent and ex you know excited people here who we can tap into, and we have. So the vast majority of people, our people, are actually from here. Okay. Not we, we don't have like a hundred people that are coming in from the outside, right? And that's the that's the point I wanted to to, to hone in on. That, that there's quite a bit of uh, and, and and there's passion around that. We want to be part of something that is quite a bit different from your usual uh, you know corporate culture. That's something where they're empowered. Something where they can make a difference. And so we were able to find that everywhere, from your traditional retailers to uh, to even some management consultants to uh, to uh, to the uh, um, to existing businesses. Great. So I, I think the takeaway here is just break down what you need and don't look specifically in something in someone who's doing exactly e-commerce yeah. it could be doing retail it could be doing something else yeah. uh, another question you, you can shout too if you want okay. hi this is uh, this question is for Namshi again uh, the, how important do you think is the analytics from either Google or SN or any other software provider. And do you think you have hit the right sweet spot between analyzing the data and having actions on it or yeah. taking actions on it? So being data driven is at our core, right? So that's uh, it's everything that we do. And uh, really understanding whether it's from the marketing perspective, exactly at a granular level, which uh, which which campaigns, which which actual AdWords, you know, advertisements, what what's working, optimizing, shifting on a daily basis in order to optimize the uh, the spend that we have on marketing is something that we have a team dedicated to, and we're we we're, we're passionate about that. But it also it manifests itself. The analytics manifest themselves in the buying. So we're we you know in the beginning we had to really rely on the the buying team from their their relevant market exper expertise, but then as soon as we actually brought in the first season of product, we start watching sell throughs, which brands are working, which ones aren't, and we're making our decisions on the next buy basis based on based on that, right? And then finally, uh, the operations, which I'm most closely uh, working with myself. We're watching each shipment, right? We want to we want to watch it end to end with with our partners uh, to see what's working, which areas. For instance, we had a great conversation in, uh, in Riyadh just the other day with the team, saying, "Well, it looks like this remote area of Saudi things aren't working here because we have 70% of the packages that we're sending to this area are returning back to us, and it's one particular. But that comes from the analytics. We know that that's a that's a that's a bad spot somehow, and then we can go in and and, and figure out either fix it or stop sending stuff there. So it, it it's everywhere. Thank you.